You know I watch a lot of documentaries on a variety of topics. Today, on Juneteenth, Netflix is releasing the documentary Civil, which takes a look at Ben Crump, a civil rights attorney whose mission is to raise the value of black life in America. So are you going to be watching? Through the lens of award-winning filmmaker Nadia Hallgren, Civil follows a year in the life of Ben Crump as he takes on the civil cases of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and Andre Hill. So we follow one year in the life of Ben Crump. Now, when you hear that, you may think, good gravy, that's just going to be a ton of footage. And yeah, I mean, it could be. But this documentary just takes a look at some, I mean, some of the cases that Crump took on in the course of one year. During this time, Crump's biggest trial is for George Floyd, seeking a settlement from the city of Minneapolis. But we also watch him talk with people that were discriminated against at a bank, and maybe a black farmer that is going up against the behemoth corporation of Monsanto. And there's even a manufacturing plant that was contaminating its workers with lead, leading to all kinds of health and physical issues for the workers and their families. Crump has a good presence on camera. He's calm and he speaks deliberately, so we don't miss any of what he's narrating for us. And he is narrating at points, but it's not like a typical narrator in the story. I mean, here he's explaining things and then conversing in ways that he probably wouldn't normally, but we as the audience need some context to what's being told to us. So he will say more things than you normally would in just regular conversation without outside parties being present. So like when he and his wife are talking about their daughter's stuffed animal, they talk about where they got it which when a husband and wife are discussing, I mean, they already know the history and the context of that, so they typically wouldn't speak that way. But for us, they over-explain a bit. And sure, it does feel unnatural or maybe rehearsed, but I never got the impression that it was to deceive or showcase them in some kind of different light. I mean, just their way of providing context. And realistically, it was probably the filmmakers that made them redo conversations so that they made sense to all of us that are outside of the relationship. But back to Crump being a good presence on camera. I mean, his speaking cadence had a quality that's reassuring. So when he's talking to families that have just lost their loved ones, which typically were by police shootings, he listens compassionately, speaking into their hurts, and then the camera, it captures us effectively. This man is always on the move, too. I mean, we watch him go from city to city, doing his best to also make stops at home to spend time with his family. But he's always in the car. I mean, he's on the phone discussing plans with his legal partners, where he's headed next, or maybe even talking strategy for an ongoing case. But the camera also shows us his non-working human side. I mean, where he speaks to his mom, sharing heartbreak at maybe another killing, or even sometimes just discussing what food he's having. I mean, all of the interactions, though, they build on each other to just show us that this isn't just some power or money-hungry suit out for the next score. And I like that the documentary actually addresses the critique of money. I mean, I'd raise the same questions about civil attorneys. Are they just out for the payday? I mean, like most civil cases, the lawyers take on these for no fee up front, but then they also get a percentage of whatever settlement they can win. But I never got the sense that Crump is living high on the hog. I mean, he wears nice clothes, but he's also shown shopping for dress shoes at a Burlington coat factory. Now, while that's not bargain basement, it's also not Nordstrom's. We see him staying at regular hotels, I mean, and he's eating modest meals, like McDonald's. So, I mean, even through all of this, he's not spending tons on himself. But he also explains in great detail, repeatedly for those that don't get it the first several times, that he cannot control the criminal side of a case. He has no say in whether or not an officer is held accountable for their actions. But what he can do is put the hurt on cities and counties that can then bring about policy change and he hits them where it hurts the most, the pocketbooks of those cities. So with the $27 million settlement for George Floyd when it was agreed upon, I mean, you know that that put a damper on the city's budget. So hopefully the city will then take a closer look at policing policies and standards to ideally never have this repeated. And honestly, I mean, if my kid was killed, well, no amount of money would be sufficient to bring them back. I mean, 27 million, it's just too low. I'd want the city bankrupted so that the cops are having to have bake sales in order to even keep the lights on in the station. Now, the storytelling isn't perfect in this. With an hour and 41 minute runtime, there is a lot of ground that the documentary could cover. You know, but I would have loved to have gone deeper into some of the cases. We just get glimpses of him meeting with families and attending press conferences, plus a lot of planning sessions that are on the phone. I think it would have been nice to spend a little bit more time on a couple of the cases just to show the details of how he works the cases to bring them to trial. I mean, especially on some of these that are landmarks in their settlements. Now, we don't need step-by-step -step minutia or even in-depth strategy meetings, but on some of these, like take the George Floyd civil case, I'm certain that they put a ton of time and effort in that. 
but we don't really get to see any of that other than maybe some brief segments that Crump spends with the family and then the, his team gathered around to hear if a settlement was reached. Now, I did really like watching his legal team react when the jury found Derek Chauvin guilty. Now, the amount of emotion that was shared echoed how a lot of the U.S. was reacting. Relief, joy, some shock, and then hope for a changing tide. I think Crump's work and his influence are going to have some far-reaching effects in ways that we don't even know yet because of how he's tirelessly fighting for the people that he represents. But even than that, I mean, he's fighting for so much more than an individual. So overall, this is an engaging documentary with some great visuals and filmmaking that is just as enjoyable as the story is. Crump is a joy to watch because he can speak with compassion, share sadness and tears with the hurting and devastated, but also joke around and make us chuckle. Many of the cases that are showcased, even though briefly touched upon, deal with injustices and inequities that should make your blood boil. I really would have loved to have more depth on at least a couple of the cases to delve into more of Crump's processes. But even with that, we get a great picture of how this man tirelessly fights so that black lives are seen as valuable. There's no sex or nudity, but there is a lot of profanity and then a lot of terrible violence, both shown and described. Now, as a reminder, I don't give couch ratings to documentaries, but I really do highly recommend checking out Civil on Netflix. So are there any other good documentaries that you've seen recently? Let me know in the comments below. I just watched Navalny on HBO Max, and that one is tense and jaw-dropping. So if you haven't seen that one, that's one to give also a watch to. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.